In the last 10 years, we have reduced the overall rate of maternal mortality by successfully tackling the direct complications of childbirth. Now is the time to reduce it further by tackling the indirect causes of maternal death. Right now, every other day, a pregnant or recently pregnant woman in the UK dies. Two thirds of those that die, die from a medical or mental health condition, not as a direct complication of pregnancy itself. I wish I'd thought about other causes of breathlessness. I might have realised the significance of what she was trying to say about not being able to lie flat. I might have picked up the pulmonary edema. Never make the assumption that symptoms are just caused by pregnancy. With the stakes so high, if a woman tells us that something is wrong, we must listen to her and go in search of an explanation. Appropriate assessment and treatment is key. Remember that pregnancy causes physiological changes and women can look well but still become sick very quickly. Search for cardiac causes of persistent breathlessness or chest pain. 23% of maternal deaths are from a cardiac cause. She came in following a seizure. She admitted she'd stopped her anti-epileptics as she'd heard they could harm her baby and were scared. She was discharged home and we urged her to restart her medication and dictated a letter to neurology. Thankfully, my senior told me it was urgent. So I also called and made an appointment directly with the epilepsy nurse specialist straight away. Another seizure could have been fatal. 11% of maternal deaths are caused by neurological conditions. Never advise women to stop medication unless discussed with an expert. Worsening epilepsy or first seizure in pregnancy is an urgent situation. And phone referral to neurology is necessary. She came into A&E Four weeks after cesarean, clearly septic from pneumonia. We did a chest X-ray and started at the septic six and phoned maternity to check which antibiotics were safe with breastfeeding. I hadn't thought to restart the thromboprophylaxis. I'm so glad we had that conversation. 14% of maternal deaths are caused by pneumonia or influenza. Imaging is safe and prompt treatment with antibiotics or antivirals is essential. Be aware of any pre-existing medical conditions such as asthma, as this can increase the severity of infection. Venous thromboembolism causes 11% of maternal deaths. It is important to reassess at every encounter. If suspicious of VTE, give high-dose low molecular weight heparin or thrombolyze if massive PE. I'm so glad I listened to her, even if it was hard to understand everything she was saying. I recognise she no longer felt able to look after her baby. The perinatal mental health service were brilliant when I contacted them. I saw her months later in the high street with her toddler. I was happy to see her looking so well. Another common cause of maternal death, and perhaps the hardest for us to see, is mental health problems. We should pay special attention to women with complex social backgrounds, a history of substance abuse, or pre-existing mental health conditions. If communication is difficult, enlist the help of an interpreter. The most important thing to remember about preventing maternal death is that it's okay to ask for help. Don't worry about overreacting and don't withhold investigations for fear of harming the fetus. Humility, communication and being proactive are crucial to preventing maternal death. By working as a team, we can stop women from dying.